Welcome, ladies. I've asked these two ladies here today to share their experiences with letting go. So we talk about letting go, but I think some people think it's too hard or it would take too long. And I'm hoping that they can demonstrate just how easy it is to let go of things and maybe smash some stereotypes about what it, what the work looks like. So we haven't rehearsed anything. We have a pre-talk, so this is just going to be kind of free-flowing, and it'll be real interesting to see where it goes. So <laughs> let me introduce my guest. I guess I should do that. <laughs> I'm joined here today with Jacqueline and Lombi. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Yeah. So sometimes we think we've already worked through something and then we find out we haven't. Do either of you have any experiences like that? Um, yes. I guess there are things that I feel part of me is okay with, and then I realize there are some residual um, things that hold me back from jumping in completely. So how do you, when those things pop up, how do you know that they're there? I know because I am conflicted by sort of oh. two emotions or feelings at the same time, mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. half my body like kind of one foot in and one foot out. Like you're half confident and then you're half hesitant. Mhm. Okay. Well, sometimes we think something is too small to bother with. And we can dismiss it and say it's no big deal. But once we look at it, we can have this big body response to it. So I have a, an example of that. Actually, it wasn't a it wasn't a small thing. It was a happy thing. So I didn't think there was anything, any kind of charge that needed to be released. And then um, one day I was just dancing and laughing, and all of a sudden I went from that to just sobbing on the floor, like instantaneously. And and it was kind of crazy. And and so what happened was I was dancing and there was this uh, music and the music took me back to a certain really, really happy time in my life. And um, it, it would involve a relationship and it was all good. There was no badness in it. It ended, but it didn't end for any bad reason. We just moved away from each other. And all of a sudden I was on the floor sobbing and you could have hit me with a ton of bricks because I had no idea that that was in there. So have either of you ever had like a big body response to something that you thought was no big deal? Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You want to share? (laughs) Well, um, I've had so many instances because I've had, I, I came from a very troubled childhood. I literally had to grow up to be adult um, around eight or nine. And, and recently um, and I had a reaction to where I suddenly realized after all my parents, my mother died when I was 12. My father died many, many uh, in 2008. So I'm not young chick anymore, but I realized that I had been an orphan since because of the sicknesses of my mother and being up, unable to be a mother, I'd been an orphan since like eight or nine years old emotionally. And it just really laid upon my soul and my heart and I could barely breathe. And it was just so heavy to realize that. And it caused me to cry, which I mean, I'm 50 years old now, please. I'm over that stuff. I'm good. I've, you know, I've, I've <laughs> gone through everything. I'm fine. I'm strong emotionally. I'm strong physically. I'm good. You know, I, I don't need, healing and I never would have picked that out of my bucket of issues as being an issue and it just it just crushed me but and once it came up for air and burst it was like okay yeah I was and I'm good now but I never realized I was carrying that because I have so much other issues to worry about Mm -hmm. yeah it's interesting how how we can be focused on some things, and then meanwhile there's this other thing that we have either no idea or we dismiss it, we think it's a small thing, and, yeah, and it's just so powerful. I was just um, adding on to that. Like it, sometimes you're just caught up in the powering through moment. And yeah. And not yeah. that moment, like breathe and let it. I've been powering on since childhood and I have not stopped. I'm 60 years old now and I, and well, I take that back because I have been recently stopping and, and shedding baggage. Mm-hmm. And I just, it's always been forward, forward, forward and not a lot of self care and a lot, definitely not a lot of self reflection. And once I've started that, I've realized how much happier and lighter I am 
by getting rid of the baggage, by addressing the issues, by when they come up, not putting it away, going, okay, later. It's like, no, let's just look at this now. And mm-hmm. being able to say, okay, oh, wow, that was trash. I don't need to take you with me any longer. And that sucked to be me then, and I'm no longer that. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's a good point about powering through, because I'm that type too. You know, I just like, just get it done, get it over with, or get through it. And I, I try to leave, leave live seasonally and remind myself, okay, this is like fall now. This is a season of letting go. It's time to do this because if I don't do that or do it with the moon, then it's so easy to just overlook it and just keep on going right on past. If you're functional Mm -hmm. and, you know, then you're hard driving like that. So that's a real good point. Do either of you have any experiences of physical pain that ended up being the result of emotional pain? Are we just going to yeah. just go ahead and put my migraines all on that one? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And how do you know that, that that is emotional? Well, because um, as I'm addressing things, I'm finding the severity and the frequency of them diminishing immensely. And it's... It, uh-huh. it, it's it's crazy because when I was in my full throng of crazy town and everything, I literally was getting them every couple of days, weekly, and narcotics wasn't cutting into them. Nothing was cutting into them. It was just drugging me out for a couple of days until, you know, my body finally cashed in and said, I'm done. But now, where I'm at now, I'll get them maybe once or twice a quarter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's cool. And I'm not using the narcotics any longer. I'm using other methods that work so much better. Cool. Do any of you have, um, when you are releasing and letting go, is it physical? So, for example, I'm, my me and my body were just real attached, <laughs> and my release tends to be really physical. So um, once I was doing some work, and uh, well, actually twice I was doing some work, and I actually threw up. Um, and I have had clients do that as well. So I think people can think that that maybe that's weird or that doesn't happen. Have you guys had that happen? Yes, for sure. Do you, do you want to share some details? <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, d- definitely very noticeable. And because I'm vigilant of uh, unusual body sensation, um, I can piece it right back to what work has just been done or sort mm-hmm. of uh, where my mind state or emotional state was and then what led to it, you know? So, mm-hmm. like, when we do our session, I I feel immediately the, like, heat steam coming out of my head and mm. my mouth and nausea coming out. And it, it, it's uh-huh. very immediate, and so I know it's working. Uh-huh. How about you, Jack? Now, um, I did a healing session, and um, the whole time, I'm, I'm very aware whenever I'm doing any type of um, treatment and therapy or whatever, I so I was very aware of what was going on and everything, and the whole time I'm like, oh, this is pretty, this is nice, and oh, well, you know, maybe she just attuned a few things. And then a couple hours later, with some friends, I got up to do something, and I collapsed on the floor, and wailing, screaming, crying, and snotting myself all over the ground. <laughs> I mean, I had a big puddle of crying, and it was like, okay, that's not really anything I would have said. Hey, let me just go and, you know, drop all my body fluids in front of people. So it was <laughs> it was incredibly cleansing, and... It, it was slightly delayed, but it was incredibly cleansing. And that's like, that doesn't happen a lot because I'm very, mm, I'm, I will say I'm very physically guarded. So I yeah, think that um, it has together, to sneak up right? on me. Yes. And sometimes we hold it in because it's not a, a, yeah. a appropriate setting to just kind of do that. Uh, you know, like you just want to like puke or cry or, or whatever. <laughs> Well, I was going to say, but and now that I'm on the like the other side, and I'm I think I'm more healed than I am damaged. It reflects like now I'm I dance with music in grocery stores. You know, I'll hear a good song, and I'm like, oh yeah, we're just going to dance right here with this, and I don't care what people think. So I feel like it's it's like a 
a different trade off and I'm less reserved about it and I'm more in tune with my my happiness health than I am with my damaged darkness. I agree. So, uh, Jack, you might have been here when this happened, but when we were in Scotland, I had a situation, a run-in, that where there was some high tension for a minute. And uh, I got into an argument with a woman who um, didn't, we didn't speak the same language. I think she was speaking Portuguese, could not understand her, didn't know what she was saying. And then we went next door to the grocery store, a little tiny grocery store, to get some, some food to eat. And I'm standing in the middle, uh, in, in front of the salad dressing aisle, and this place is packed. And I start shaking, and I'm like, <laughs> and, you know, in the middle of the store, in front of all these people. And I knew immediately that it was a trauma release response. And I started laughing because it, if I didn't know that, I would have been so embarrassed and tried to shut it down. But because I knew what was going on, I wanted it to come out, so I just let it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just way more willing to to just let it be what it is because I don't want that stuff inside. Mm-hmm. Right. For the seven minutes that they're going to see me in the store dancing in the aisles, I'm not going to hold in seven months of grief and, and issues and pack more baggage in my luggage. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And sometimes that moment passes. It, 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 like the analogy I can think of is kind of like, you know, when you have to go and you hold it, it then yeah. it becomes complicated. And then if that moment passed and you're like, shit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I imagine that some people hold stuff in because it's painful. But is it painful when it comes out? Actually, it can, it's, it's like ripping off a scar sometimes. You rip off the scab and, you know, it, it'll hurt for a while. And sometimes that helps heal and sometimes it doesn't. But I think that... I think I'm 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 more prone to go through the now knowing what I know. I'm more prone to have you go ahead and rip the scab off, and we'll pour some more iodine in there or whatever to clean it and get it yeah. cleared, so it's just yeah. not festering. Me too. I I rather go gung ho and like you know like with wisdom tooth, all in one, all then no no procrastinating, no prolonging it or like doing it infection, nothing. <laughs> Because you're in that moment and everything is kind of lined up. So it's kind of like a domino effect. You don't push one domino down and be like, okay, stop. Let's wait until the <laughs> next one falls. You let the whole chain go, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, my experience is that I'm actually kind of thrilled when when I have big emotions like that because I'm not a big emotion kind of girl. And... um so it's kind of exciting in a way. And I know that it's going to be short-lived and it's going to pass, so it doesn't ever get too overwhelming or scary. Mm-hmm. Right. So do either of you have to spill your guts and share your dirty laundry in order to heal? Um, I'll, I'll just give my example, okay? Um, I was sexually assaulted by my father when I was a child, which, you know, that's part of my bucket of crap. And... um I, there came a point in my life I realized I had to forgive him because he didn't care. He didn't acknowledge. It, it, it evidently, it didn't happen for him. But um, I realized I was being damaged by it. And so for like, I did a process of looking in the mirror, forgiving him every day. I never had to say anything to him. And one day I just said, okay, uh, yeah, I forgave you. And then I, I took a breath and realized I had gotten rid of that baggage, that that was gone for me. And so I don't feel like I have to confront people because sometimes when you confront people about it or you you, you say what it is, they instantly shut down. And it's not going to help them. Mm-hmm. And I have a sister like that that she never, I mean, I, for over 35 years I've been trying to help her. And this, recently I just had to step back and go, you know what, you just want to swim in your swill. And I can't. I can't. So I don't have to face people anymore in regards to for my personal healing because, again, I don't think a lot of people want to believe that they need to be healed. I think a lot of people walk around thinking, I'm perfectly fine, everything's good. And in reality, they got a lot of baggage they're just not willing to to look at. And I'm not, I'm not the one after one or two tries to, to be the viewfinder. Yeah. I think we all have stuff to get rid of and stuff we don't even know we're carrying. So I think if you if anybody's out there saying I'm good, 
I mean, there's good enough, but like I'm, I'm solid. There's nothing. I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think we always got stuff. So Jack, you and I did an intensive where we worked together for a weekend. How taxing was it to do that much work in a short period of time? Um, I didn't really feel like it was taxing. I think it was, there was a lot of clearing. Mm-hmm. But I didn't feel like it, that it, it, it. I didn't feel like it burned me out. That it was like, oh wow, that's just too much. I, I got to keep that because that's helping me walk or that's helping me breathe. It was like once we we shed the light on the crap that was going on and everything, and was able to identify it. It was like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, we can leave that here. I'm good, <laughs> you know. So um, I'm I'm not intimidated by doing the intensives because. Sometimes, because we are um, our emotions, our memories, our, our experiences, are roots of our life, they are mm-hmm. entangled. So if you pull a string and mm-hmm. it's tugging, it's attached to something else. Oh, by all means, keep pulling. Don't cut mm-hmm. it off because you're leaving a little bit behind that could root again. Because that's yeah, what happens. Exactly. Go ahead and just pull it out until that it gives on its own. And at that point in time, we'll address what what's been pulled out and we'll go forth. But I never felt like, Oh God, you need to stop because I'm breaking. Nah, I'm good. Just keep mm-hmm. going. If mm-hmm. I explode, land on the ground, throw a pillow underneath me, I'm good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that That's how I roll too. So like, I, I think of like the intensive and like the work we do, it's like a snowball effect. And for me, like, you know, like regular school, how it's spaced out through the year. I rather do a three week, you know, summer course where it's like 12 hours a day and get it through, you know, like you're saying with the roots, if you leave just a little bit hanging left, it will regrow again. You know, it's resilient, just like you are resilient. So your problem will root itself back up. So the only way is to kind of clear it all out and like pour that salt, like bear in the ground so nothing comes back up. And like exactly. mm-hmm. with the snowball effect, like once we start like one week, I want to just continue it because it, it's like a, it's like practice, you know, your muscle gets used to it. Like a workout, like an intensive workout, you feel sore the next day. That's when you should continue. I mean, yes, take rest and don't over push to the point of, you know, injury. But when your muscles warmed up, that's when you keep going. And then, like, if yeah. the ball's already on its downhill in that momentum, I kind of give it a little more push to get it to where it needs to land. So if either of y'all have ever done therapy before, how is this different than therapy? <laughs> I've been in therapy <laughs> three different times, okay? And, I mean, literally, I feel like um, it was a waste of time previously. <laughs> I... I um, I went in therapy for sexual abuse. I went in therapy for being in foster care. And I went in therapy for having um, a hysterectomy that stripped me the ability to have children. And all, all the, obviously those are all traumatic type issues. And none of them addressed what needed to be addressed. They they dance around and go, well, how does that make you feel? And, and <laughs> you think it's like, dude, seriously, we need to go deeper than that. We don't need to just ice the cake. We need to dig the crap out of the cake before we worry about that. So so I felt like it was always like they had a, a map, and it wasn't a map to get to Disneyland. It was a map of all the things around Disneyland. So you'd keep circling mm-hmm. around the issue, and they'd never poke in there, which I needed you to go in there, poke in there, and then let's rip this crap out. So for mm-hmm. me, it was like always rolling my eyes, like, really? I'm going to sit here for another for an hour for you to tell me, well, how does it make you feel? Like, and then no, let's see for me. next week, you know? I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's, oh, that's getting heavy. Let's save that for next week. It's like it's like when you cut the lawn, right? You yeah. it, you cut half the lawn, and they're like, let's leave the other half for next week. But by the time you mow the other half, that other half has grown back. And so exactly. you, have, you have to do it, you know, counterproductive work. It's like, really, I don't want to buy your vacay in Bali. Or Bali, but go ahead and keep, you know. <laughs> so we're doing so the work is any- different um, in that we get to clearing the whole route. 
So, like, how long does that take? Oh, my gosh. For my over four years of issues and crap in my life, um, some I, I think every time I've had a session with you and with um, the various focus and perspective of that, every time I've had a session, I've had something rooted out and, and, and tossed away. Slowly but and sure, um, surely unpacking my baggage and getting rid of it. So, And I've never felt the need to turn around and pick it back up. I've never felt mm-hmm. like roll my eyes like, oh, my God, seriously, we're going to have to keep going and keep going. It's like, okay, oh, look, there's that crap. Let me go in there and help you dig it out. We'll dig it out. It's gone. You're like, oh, okay, thank you. So it's fast. It, and it's, not, it's not speedy, and it's continual growth because we always change continuous people. It's just very successful. It's very – It's. I, I just love it because I, I never walk away going, wow, well, that was a waste of my time or that was a waste of my money or whatever. I've always felt that there's progress forward mm-hmm. and that we've rooted out crap. Like if, it's, if we identified it, we got rid of it the day. It wasn't like, yeah. let's talk about the treatment plan. Oh, that that's it? Okay, let's let's keep circling around the plant. It's, it's all about more talking and it wasn't really doing is there a downside? No, I I don't think so because I've never felt um, diminished from having these sessions and such. I've always felt, you know, that that something has been accomplished, and I felt hopeful for the next session or whatever if I've needed to because work was done. Yes. Yep. And. You know, I I don't miss the crap I've un, that's been unpacked and tossed out. Oh, oh, oh! I was just gonna say, like, in comparison, this one you look forward to the next session to get more work done. Whereas yeah. in previous treatment and other therapies I've had, you dread it coming because you were playing in the same mud. Exactly. Oh, thank you. Yes, exactly. Just different. That's a moves. good point. Yeah, that's a good point because uh, I think. With therapy, yes, it can be like turning it around. And now here's the other side, and here's the other side, and you get in, involved with one thing, and then all those tangles and those strings that you talked about earlier, you have to look at all of those too. But with this, you really don't, because a lot of times they will all come w- at the same time. Mm-hmm. Correct. Because they're connected. And I, and I right. feel like in the previous mm-hmm. ones, and I just thought of this, but I felt in the previous ones, I just feel like they were tightening the weave of the crap. Yeah. They weren't weren't trying to unpick the weave and then the knots and anything else. They're just like, okay, well, let's just pull this a little bit tighter and, and attach to this one to make it, quote, unquote, safer. Here's another analogy that kind of works. Is I think of it like, say, a kiddie pool, right? And the work we do with our session is, like, we know the water's dirty. It's muddy. It's got leaves in it. And what we do immediately is clear and change that water out. So then we play in clean water. But in yeah. previous and other, it's like we sit in that same muddy pool and we play in it to expose it. And then the session kind of goes to a, let's let it settle, okay? Let's work on this more next time. So you're still sitting in the dirty water, but it's settled. So you think you're okay at the surface, but it's still dirty water that's just going to be stirred back up the next time you go into it. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So if somebody were considering doing this, do you have any advice for them? Oh, advice? Oh, yeah. Well, I've, I've been giving that advice to somebody, my brother, who's a um, the war veteran. And um, I, as I told him, you need to try it. You need to, to, you need to go in with it and give it a shot because obviously if you're looking, you've tried other options, whether they be medicinal, chemical, or... Um, normalized therapy and so forth. If you're searching for help, why would you not look at an avenue that people are ecstatic about and, and getting um, getting solutions to their issues and actually releasing the crap they've been carrying? I mean, mm-hmm. it's not a tattoo, you know, but you can get a lot of benefit from it. And I guess my advice would be if, when you go into it, go in with your sleeves rolled up, ready to get the work done. Because if you go in with 
you know, your nice clothes and proper and thinking that the other person's going to do all the work, then the work's not going to be done. So when I, yeah, when I arrive, I, I've got my sleeves up ready to pull and haul tree roots with you. Right. And definitely with an open mind. To, uh, you know, mm-hmm. flush everything you've ever had for therapy or med- medicine or whatever, you've everything you've ever tried before, go in with an open mind and go, hmm, what's the worst case scenario? Mm-hmm. You'll come out with the same stuff you went in with, but don't be surprised when you leave baggage behind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys, you guys make good points because it is not like anything else that I've ever seen before. So if you have an expectation that it's going to look like X Y Z, it is not. Mm-hmm. You do need an yeah. open mind. And the other thing that you said was, uh, Lavi, that you said, you know, this, if you're expecting somebody to do something to you, this is not that. You got to mm-hmm. do your own work. <laughs> but that's one of the things that I think is so empowering about it because. Once you you have to do the letting go, and once you do that, you can do it again and again and again. Exactly. So. You, tools are given to you. It's not it's not the um, the mystery behind the door that you can only achieve this when you're in my office. It's rather you know what? Here's your tools. I'm going to teach you how to use them, and mm-hmm. go forth and take your toolbox with you and use them. And if you have steps that you need help with, come on back. I'm I'm more than happy to help you to achieve it and fine tune your, your craftsmanship. But I'm giving mm-hmm. you the tool. I'm not keeping yeah. the tools in the office and we can only address it in the office. Yes. And yeah. and then other people come thinking that they're paying you money at that you've got the toolbox that you do the work. But really yeah. you need to bring your toolbox with the tools you have and then you're there to give more tools, and we use the tools together. Correct. Yeah. I truly believe that it's all our work to let go on a daily basis, and the wheel of life is such that we're always picking stuff up, and if we're not putting stuff down, life just gets to be too heavy and too hard. So I I like doing this work. I like doing it with you guys, and I appreciate Mm -hmm. you coming on. And if anybody wants to experience a free group releasing session, check out the show notes for the link on how you can get in on that. Sign up for the newsletter or and get updates on when the next one is, too, and I do one free one per month. And you can also check me out at net if you're ready to get your own releasing session. So thank you all for joining me, and I'll see you next week.